to the, like this legitimately feels like it may be too early to have this conversation, but if we really want to maximize our vegetable gardens, we do need to be talking about succession planning. Howdy neighbor, how is your garden growing? And my harvest, well, they've been going really well. But the thing is, is that I've got a lot of cold weather crops here and it is definitely getting warm to hot. Yesterday, I think it hit, started to hit like 80s and then like my car was reading 90s when I was running some errands. And it just got me thinking, how much longer until my lettuces start bolting? How much longer until my broccoli start bolting? And if I remember from last year and I was looking at some of the information I had, I'm like, man, I don't have that much longer. But what it told me is, is that I need to be thinking about what's next. What's going next in these beds? And that brings me to succession planting. <laughs> the sun is just coming up over the trees. So when it comes to gardening, I feel like basic skills you need is to learn how to like plant seeds, plant transplants. But then once you kind of get beyond that, we have to move to our intermediate skills. And that has to do with succession planting. And succession planting, I would say level zero is you don't do it. Level one of succession planting is like, I put the lettuce in this bed. When the lettuce is done, the bed sits empty, probably gets weeds in it. And then whenever it's the time of year to do the next year's crop, I just put the lettuce back in. And this becomes a dedicated bed. And that I would say is level one succession planting. You just have an annual use for that bed, but not throughout the year. Level two succession planting, I would say is I have lettuce and then when the lettuce is done, I chop it down or I pull it. I honestly, I know a bunch of you were asking me, I just chop everything at the base level and then I'm like, it's good because I don't like to disturb all the root systems. But level two, Basically what you're doing is, is like, now that the lettuce is done, I clear the bed and now I put in seeds or I put in new transplants, whichever you like to do. And that's what I would call level two succession planting. But level three is we start planting with seeds or transplants before the bed is empty. And that is what I'm starting to think about. Because as I have gone through the journey of becoming from a beginner succession planter to a, I don't know, master succession planter, I would not say I'm a master succession planter. I feel like this is my first year where I'm really legitimately like level three, let's try it. The pros and cons as you kind of go through the beginner to, I don't know, master level succession planting is that you're not using your space efficiently slash you can create problems for yourself because when you have exposed beds that don't have anything else in them, it just kind of lets the weeds come through. So I started thinking, wow, we don't have that much more time with our lettuce. Like maybe we have another month, maybe two months. Questionable. I'm gonna talk you through what I'm thinking so that you can get yourself thinking. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. So if you, that's what you wanna learn about, cool. Or you just wanna hang out, cause we always like to do that. Grab a cup of tea, get a pen and pencil out so you can start thinking about what's next. So the first thing when I'm looking at my beds, one of the things I need to figure out is first, well actually second at the same time, okay, there's kind of two things you wanna do. You can do them in either order. What are other crops that you're not currently growing that you wanna grow and that could potentially grow in the upcoming seasons? This is gonna be both for right now, this time period that we're in, which is spring. You should be thinking about what would you wanna plant in the summer or growing during the summer and what would you wanna plant in the fall? Fall? Yes. This is where I started, my wheels really started turning. I was like, I better get going on some stuff. <laughs> because some of the crops that go through summer, they're not like a lettuce. The crops in the summertime are very rarely like a lettuce where it's like, put the seed in, you can start harvesting 30 days later. They are gonna tend to be more like your tomatoes where it's like months and months. You're talking about three months, four months, with some of them six months that they're gonna be holding up that space. So here we are in late March, early April. So, I mean, we could be talking about anywhere from July, August, September, that any of these beds are gonna be freed up for your fall crops. And we know fall crops, right? When we get back into fall, or maybe you don't know, that's when we can get back into a lot of the classic stuff. So, you know, you wanna be able to have some stuff. So we really do need to be thinking about what's sitting there over the summer so that we can also free up space for the fall. So start thinking, what would you want? And then the second thing, third thing. Okay. I know I said the first thing and now I'm like hitting a bunch of other points, but we're just like hang with me for a second. So you need to know how long is that crop going to take? Is it a three month, a four month? So you want to look at how long until harvest and then how long does it like 
produce for. And then like, is it one of those like, boom, you're gonna get a whole bunch of like a determinant, you know, like you're gonna get all your crop at once or is it like an Everglades tomato? It's like over the months and you just may have to make a choice to just like, <laughs> you might have to kill it off if you want to. So that's like your one list you're making, right? And on your other list over here or over here, you pick which side. You need to think about what's currently in your beds. Like how much longer do they need to stay in there? Case in point, is this bed with the peppers, right? So peppers can take, you know, are usually gonna use up a bed for three, four months, depending on how long. And of course you can leave them, many of these year over year. So we could actually leave these through the fall. And those are some of the choices that we need to consider making is what am I doing with these peppers? Do I think these eggplants will make it through the summer? But when will I be done getting eggplants off of this? that I might consider freeing up the space. Of course, of course, crops like my lettuce, this is not going to make it through the summer. They are definitely gonna get stressed out and bolt on me. So this, when is this gonna be done? I know a lot of people have said their lettuces are already bolting. This type of romaine is doing great. If I look at my notes from last year, but it was in a much shadier location, I it looks like by May, they were all bolting and we were kind of like done. So I think I've got April that we can keep going. And then May is gonna be like a question mark whether these are gonna even do anything. So that's what I'm sitting here thinking. It's like, okay, so by May, we want like a plant that's, you know, like six inches tall, maybe a foot tall. And I looked through the notes is it looks more like, I think I was able to make it into early June with like the little, like when you harvest your broccoli heads, you can get like little broccolis afterwards. And I think these went all the way into June. They might've got, actually gotten into like early July, but that was for a shadier location than this. So this also is probably gonna be done right at the beginning of summer. And the onions should be done before then too. Oh, that means this bed, maybe a month after the lettuce bed is gonna probably need something. And then let's go over to our tomato onion bed. While these tomatoes will probably go all the way into June, that's been pretty typical, um, and usually are like at July, the onions in front of them, and the spinach, spinach is already dead, but the onions in front of them are definitely not gonna last probably beyond May. They'll probably some point in May be done and being pulled. Lettuce bed, I need to start thinking about what am I planting, slash, I need to plant it now. And then these other beds, I need to start pulling together a game plan. So here's what I'm thinking for the lettuce bed. I harvested Roselle last year and it was so good. If you don't know Roselle, Roselle is kind of like a cranberry substitute. That's what a lot of people told me. And then a lot of people make like teas from it um, or a lot of people make Roselle jam and they use it as like a cranberry sauce, like substitute at Thanksgiving. I will tell you the recipe I used so it could be a recipe thing. I didn't feel like it was as tart as a cranberry sauce, but this does not mean it was bad. And all the people in my family who tasted it, which I had picky, picky tasters, agreed it tasted more like raspberry jam or raspberry jelly, whichever you wanna call it. Like raspberry jam was more like what they thought it tasted like. Slash, my dad who basically eats like only he doesn't eat, not eat vegetables. He doesn't eat a lot of variety of vegetables. He was like, he wanted a jar, but I only made one plant that was growing well, one that was not doing good, produced a pound of fruit and the pound of fruit equaled about 10 ounces of Roselle jam based on the recipe I used and the size of the calyxes, which is like the fruit that you harvest. So my dad wanted more, we wanted more. We barely got any. So I need like a way more Roselle. Plus I need it in a better location so it produces more slash. I also don't need a hurricane to knock some of it over cause that's part of what happened. So this bed, boom, Roselle bed. And what I'm gonna do in just a minute with as many seeds as I have, which I don't think I have enough, I'm gonna start getting all the Roselle going. And what I'm gonna do because I don't think I have enough seeds is I'm gonna start planting on the far end because this garden, when you look at it, the, it gets most of its sun from this direction, which is the east, not the west. So if I plant this end first, if these ones grow up first, because this plant is going to get a few feet tall, like I think about three to five feet tall, what will happen is if I planted this end first, these might get too tall and shade those ones out. So if I start on that end and then I just, as I get another seed packet, because I think I don't have enough, then I'll just add more seeds and these will grow and not be hindered by sun issues. And what's great about this is that Roselle doesn't really need good soil. There's a happy puppy running around. But Roselle doesn't need really good soil. 
Um, so the fact that this soil has been meh, I won't really need to amend it. So I just need to get like them in and get them going. And then um, it could potentially help extend some of the life of the lettuce. And the reason is, is because if they get tall enough, right as it's, maybe the sun intensity is getting a little too much for them, they may provide additional shade and give some diffused light to these plants. So, so that's one thing we're gonna do. We're gonna get the roselle seeds in. Now, I do not, I definitely do not have enough roselle to go beyond this and I'm gonna need, like, I wanna plant a lot. So my thought process is definitely gonna be probably another bed of roselle where I have brassicas, um, but I'm gonna wait another month before I do it. This bed over here with the tomatoes is gonna go to Thai soldier, which is a good companion plant. Beans are Thai soldier beans and beans are a good companion plant with our tomatoes. So that's just gonna help cover that ground up in front. And because they climb a little bit, these are the seeds that Petrina gave me. Um, I'm gonna, one of the projects I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put another one of these down here and we'll let it grow up a little bit. And that could also, again, help these tomatoes, but we will not plant them yet because also it's too early. I don't want them competing. And then last but not least is I'm gonna throw some okra in this bed. And of course I wanna wait till as late as I can. I'm probably gonna hit like, this one I'm thinking, May, May. So maybe mid-May, I'll probably plant okra in that bed so that that starts shooting up and give shade to our peppers. Cause our peppers, many of those can go through the summer, but they will not like the sun intensity that we have during the summertime. They can handle the heat. The heat's not the problem, it's the sun intensity. So getting okra in there, this may allow some of those to make it through the fall. And then we might be able then just use those plants for our fall instead of having to replant again. So that's kind of my idea back here. Front yard, no idea. Absolutely no idea. The only thing we're gonna do today for that is I have a whole bunch of sunflower seeds. And if you wanna plant sunflower seeds, now is the time you can start planting sunflower seeds. Actually, you could have planted them in March, but whatever. I want big old sunflowers. Don't really care much for like from a food perspective, but they're just pretty. So I'm putting them in. And I've got like a ton of seeds and my kids love sunflowers. So there you go. That's what we're doing. So let's get going. Let's plant some okra seeds and some sunflower seeds. So now knowing the things and the tips I just gave you, what kind of things are you thinking about succession planning for this time of year? And for those who are really experienced, what are some of your favorite crops of succession plan and what's your technique? One, I think others would like to know. And two, I wanna know, cause I learned from you guys too. So let me know what kind of things are you thinking about succession planning? Okay, so the Roselle seeds that I'm gonna be using are these ones. They're the Roselle Thai Red from Southern Exposure. You can order these online, that's how I got mine. And what do the instructions say? So no deeper than two to four times the seed diameter. I don't know how big the seeds, I don't remember how big the seeds are. So let's take a look. I remember they're not, they're not like sunflower seed size. This is it, this is all the seeds that I get. And if I remember right, I think that Trina and I were chatting about Roselle the other day. And she was saying that she felt like there was like a 50% germination rate, which would imply I should probably put two to a whole, but honestly, I don't have that many. So let's see, sow in shallow pots or flats indoors under grow lights in the greenhouse. <laughs> Look at these Northern instructions. Use good quality sterile seed mix, blah, blah, blah. Here's why I question this. Um, so Roselle is in the hibiscus family. And what I will tell you is one of them, other than having a slight tilt, did fine getting through Hurricane Ian. And we were getting tropical storm force to category one hurricane force winds here. Like on my, like not in the state of Florida, but here. So that tells me it probably has a really strong root system. So when you do all the like plant the seed, up plant the seed, all that shenanigans, you statistically are not gonna get as good of a tap root. So not knowing what our hurricane and storm forecasts are gonna look like in the near future, I'm planting these directly in the ground, plus grow lights and greenhouses. <laughs> I don't need that. It's Florida, we're hot. So we're gonna put these in. We'll put them, I don't know, like a half inch deep and yeah. Oh wait, how far apart are they supposed to be? I forgot to look that. Oh dang, it doesn't have it on here. Well, I'm gonna Google that really quick. <laughs> feel proud of myself that even though I Googled it, I felt pretty confident in the answer. I was like, I think it's like three to five feet apart because they're, I mean, they're like small hibiscus shrubs. So 
this bed is only three feet wide. So in theory, I should only plant them down the middle, but I want more plants. So what I think I'll do, ugh, but if I plant them and then I do the same thing in the other bed. So if I plant them about a foot in, then they're probably gonna go over the bed edge by like six inches. So, and then I'll do kind of like a zigzag pattern. Yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna ziggy zag and I'll show you what I mean. That way, how many do I have? I think I can count this. This is not that many. 28 seeds. <laughs> you know, I might have enough to plant both beds, but, but I don't need to because, and I don't wanna plant that one for another month anyway. So what I'm gonna do is I think with the number of spots I'm gonna need, I know if I would have used my planner, I could plan this out better, but I just wanted to get going. Sometimes we just need to get going. Just get stuff done. So, but what I wanted to do was I probably could have figured out exactly how many of these I could have done, but I'll use two per hole and we'll see how far we're going to get. And then I will decide how many more packets of seeds I can order because Southern exposure wasn't that long, maybe like a couple weeks between ordering and getting my seeds. Yeah. Okay. Looks like I was left over with five seeds, which is cool. Um, what I could do, depending on how those Thai ba soldier, <laughs> Thai basil soldier, soldier. So depending on how those Thai soldier beans work, and based on what Patrina was explaining to me, I maybe might just throw some in there, but not yet, because it's way too early. So I'm just gonna hold on to these until I get my other packets and I'll use these ones up first. Let's head up front and let's go plant our sunflowers. And while it's technically not a succession plan for me because there's not really much in that spot at the moment, it could be potentially a succession plant for you because they will grow pretty deep into the summer. Um, they kind of have their life cycle. So once they're done, they're done. But you know, you can plant them anywhere between March and July. So something to think about. So this is the location I am going to plant a ton of sunflowers. I already have my dune sunflower, which we love, but they kind of stay low. And I really loved having like last year, like boom, these big old sunflowers hanging out up here. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna like, and what's cool is my native ground couplers, whether it's my dune sunflower or my sunshine mimosa, which is also putting out new little cute, they're cute little flowers, really won't interfere with it. Cause they'll just kind of, grow up. So we're going to do two different types of sunflowers. I have obviously used these before. So we got skyscraper and mammoth. They both get really tall. Also a good reason to plant them earlier because while you could plant them later with all the storms that happen in the winter, you may find that like they fall a little too easy. Um, so you want these and you want them at least 12 to 18 inches apart. Blooms in summer. Wow. I mean, it depends where you live, but in Florida, <laughs> it'll probably be, let's see if we do these now, April, May, so June, yeah, well, I guess it would be summer, June to July. Okay. So we're going to get these in. We're just going to mix them together. I really don't care. I have a ton of, sun <laughs> every time we go to the store and we buy seeds, my kids buy a ton of sunflower seeds. I actually have a ton of sunflower seeds left over that I harvested. I don't know. If I did that, like our whole yard. That is my son's dream. I don't know if you guys have this dream. He would love for us to take out all the grass in the back <laughs> and plant nothing but sunflowers and then make like almost the equivalent of a corn maze, but with sunflowers. That's like his, like, he wishes we could do that. So I'm not gonna do that. But maybe you wanna do that and let me know if you do. Or if you know anyone who's ever done that. Cause, or if you know a place in Florida where we could go see one, because I know he just like loves the idea of like, sunflower maze. I think our mammoths did better last year, but I do feel like we had a couple skyscrapers that happened. So I'm gonna put it like, well, I'm just gonna use all. Just gonna use all of them. Just do all of them. And to make it more fun and chaotic, yeah, I'm just gonna mix them. Who knows which one I'm grabbing? There'll be no thought process to how these come together.
So our seeds are in and now all we have to do is wait on those beds and plus figure out the rest of this. But if you're excited to go do some succession planting but you don't know what to plant, go ahead and get your free seasonal gardening guide at www.wildfloridian.net slash guide. Completely free from me to you. And what's gonna be next is we're gonna be working on our native wildflower garden. We have to do the phase two section so that I can continue to fill in the gaps. So if you wanna make sure you don't miss that, go ahead and like, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. New videos each week, actually about three videos each week for the coming future. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.